Second Ezra 6, 27. For evil shall be put out, and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which have been so long without fruit shall be declared. Call Halal Yahweh Bahasham Yahushai Bahasham Rakaha Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so, the 144,000. And the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners among the heathen that look like those heathen. This is not a black thing. And to the few Akwaf that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you with another crucial lesson in truth. And uh, this is one of those things where you actually want to, one of those movies where you want to start at the end. Where you, you know, how you watch a movie and they show you, they show you like the, uh, uh, a highlight reel of the last event. And then they show you the whole movie to show you how you got to that moment. This is one of those things because a lot of people... Watch, you know, when you see a series there often, you'll notice that the numbers are always the highest on the first uh, episode and then the lowest by the last. And in this movie, the good stuff is on the last one. So you might want to start here. All right. But um, we're going to go. I'm going to read uh, some of this. The things from this book that came out in 1992 that I read in the first one and marry it together with more evidences and with a video that was put up by the beloved brother from the uh, arrows of indignation. And it's the spirit, man. We're one body. How, how him, I'm doing this video and then him putting up this video. It's just the Lord is, the Lord is, is, is something else, man. The Lord is something else. Um, but, uh, let me pull up. Some of the pages from this book, because that's what I'm reading from. These are screenshots of uh, pages from this book. And I just want to read a couple things about yeah, that. Around the time of Christopher Columbus' discovery of the new world. Yeah. And it said, Christopher Columbus' discovery of the new world. This same group of American Jews, the Sephardim, because matter of fact, let me go back. Let me just start at the introduction. Introduction, and, and so this is the introduction that I'm reading, by the way, of this book. It says, in the year 1992, the ob observance of the Columbus Quimentary marks a special, I guess that means five, 500 year anniversary, marks a special moment in history of the American Jewish experience, all right, because them robbing and lying about who they are. Because basically what you find out is that the Savardom were, were the Negroes that came out of Portugal and Spain when Portugal and Spain fell. And we're going to provide all the receipts to prove that. And he connects the dots. Arrogantly, let's see if we can pull his face up. This guy here. He connected the dots. That's uh, Martin A. Cohen right there. And I, and I believe that he's already in the spirit world at this point. But he came in that spirit of telling on himself. So he told he gave he told the truth about a history, but he told a lie about who the people were. Okay, but it says in the year 1992, the observance of the Columbus uh, Quint Quint cent, cent, centenary ah, that word Quint centenary centenary. All right, marks a special moment in the history of the American Jewish experience. For a, a brief time, the historical spotlight with all, uh, will be able to shine on a group of American Jews whose ancestors left Spain about the same time Columbus undertook the, his journey of discovery. They got kicked out of Spain. Spain was defeated. All right? And the Moors and the Morenos, right? the Palatine Boers that, uh, that, that Ben Franklin wrote about in, in his letter in 1751, OK, <laughs> these very same. So that wasn't the his people, the man that you see on the screen at all. He's talking about a group of people that wasn't his. All right. OK, so it says. Uh, and while the mainstream of America will celebrate 500 year anniversary of Christopher Columbus, Cristobal Cologne. All right. 
the, what's his real name, of the New World. He didn't discover the New World. They already they knew it was here. The, the, the Northern Kingdom had already come here. All right. And there's records of it in the Bible, in, in the Book of Kings. All right. And also in the in the Apocrypha, in uh, Second Ezra, the thirteenth chapter, you can't discover something that where people already lived there. The same group of American Jews of Sephardim will shed tears for the nearly two hundred thousand Spanish Jews who who were expelled in fourteen ninety two from the country in which they had lived many centuries. And that and so once again, he's connecting them to us to a history that was not his own. Uh, his people, the Jewish converts, the Ashkenazi, who were not Ashkenazi at all, they were of Edom. All right, they were just living in the land of Ashkenazim and called that name. Remember, Ashkenaz is the son of Japhet. There is no there, Japhet uh, uh, is, is is not Shemitic and didn't have you know that he wasn't a part of that bloodline. Uh, but it says. Um, Christopher Columbus' discovery of the New World, the same group of... Oh, I read that already, Salakia. Um, but nevertheless, it says, the Sephardim, as they identified themselves according to their prayer rituals, dominated the religious, social, economic life of the American jury during the colonial, uh, during the, the colonial and early uh, federal periods. By the 1830s, however... They were overwhelmed in numbers by the substantial immigrants of Jews from German-speaking Central Europe, which would be his people. The converts, the Edomite converts, the pale-fleshed uh, ones who are indeed, their genetics show that they are white as well. There's no difference between them and white people. Hence the reason why it's illegal to do DNA tests in the land of Israel. Um, but it says that these, in the 1830s, however, they were overwhelmed in numbers by the substantial immigration of the Jews from German-speaking Central Europe. These Germans soon developed much of the uh, institutional framework that would serve as a foundation for a future American Jewish community. So they basically, they came over and took over all the things that the Negro Jews, the Negro Judeans, the real Israelites had set up here in the Americas and set on it, squatted on it, and claimed it to be their own, and now they're the face of it. Yeah. Now he is the face of it. All right. So now let's uh let's go to some to to the Negro question. Just go in order if I have them here. This is the book The Negro Question. Because it not it, so not only was it Portugal and Spain where these people uh these Negroes were, but they were all over uh uh Europe. Okay? And they were not Negroes. They were not. They were not uh, 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 Africans, as they try to say that they were. All right. And this is on page. Uh, I'm just going to read this. This one. This is page four and five. And these are just inserts from from books, uh, sermons, and speeches of historians who wrote about the dark flesh people of of, of Europe. Because see, all this history has been redacted and omitted. OK, and we're providing you with the evidences and all the evidences are coming from so-called white people, from their scholars, from their nobility. All right. But this is uh, on page four at the top, the very book that you're looking at. Professor Winchell Alexander, our remote ancestry, 1815 to 1900 collection of journals. These short black men came from Atlantis, northern Africa. They overran Europe. They were known as Britons. Now, coming from Atlantis and over and 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 being from Africa, that portion is a lie. They came from the land of Israel. the The Israelites in Africa came out of Israel, fleeing Roman persecution. All right, we we provided that receipt in a uh, from from Babylon to Timbuktu on page eighty four. All right, Rudolf R. Windsor gave you the historical account, uh, matching the history up secular history up with scripture all right and when the uh when the israelites the judeans the house of david many of them fled uh uh east into uh or, or fled into africa to the mountains of africa and then from there they went uh i mean west into africa and then from there they uh, uh they went along the niger river and set up all those kingdoms along the niger river all the way to the west coast of africa those were 
uh, uh, Israelite for, uh, refugees in that area on, on maps from the 1700s. It's called Negro Land. And they even had a Fort Judah and a Fort Levi uh, in, in that area. So they were not Africans. Well, here's another, uh, and also on page four of the very book you're looking at, the Roman Historic Tacticus, the Origins of Black Britons. The Iberians, so and, and, uh, the Iberians are people with curly hair, anthropological reviews, uh, Society London, uh, volume eight. So that's from the Black Britons. So they had over curly, that's what you call nappy hair. Curly is the root word is curly. It's called over curly because it's so curly that it's all tangled together. And the the racist word nappy came out of that. Okay, you got loose curls, and then you got over curly hair. All right, I got a kind of a mixture of the two. All right, it says uh, Joseph Riston, Annals of Colon of Chaldean Picts and Scots, Volume Page. Uh, Volume 2, pages 7 and 27, because he's also talking about the Etruscans, that were the dark, the original dark inhabitants of, 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 of Western Asia that they call Europe and, and the Middle East. All right. Uh, where are your, your Polynesians, your Hawaiians, Samoans, and they have all them tattoos. That's where they get the word pick from. And the Scots. All right. And the Scots were basically Israelites. Okay. It said the picks. Brits are brown complexion with curly hair. That's so. That's the that's the uh, the the third uh, um, evidence receipt. Here's the fourth one. Ivan Van Sertima, African presence in, in in early Europe, page two two twenty twenty five. Remember, they are not Africans. It says the Britons look like Ethiopians, and that matches up with biblical scripture. Amos nine, Amos nine and seven. Basically saying that the Israelites are like like unto the Ethiopians, meaning they're both melanated, dark complected people. All right. And then the the last one is Albert. Uh, well, actually, there's more on page five. I'm just going to stop on page four for time's sake. Albert Church with 1912, the origins of evolution, 12 and 13. The black Bosque, meaning bodies, were exterminated from Europe. All right. So there it is, man. All right. And the Etruscans were maritime people and they were sailors. And you can, and that's in Ezekiel 27 and 19, all right? And Dan, and that the Danites uh, sailed, you know, hung out with them, with Yavon, the Greeks. And that, you know, Blacks in Antiquity is a good book uh, example for that, all right? So these are heavy receipts and information that, uh, that I'm sharing with you. So let's go on to the next one now. Let's look up, now we're going to look up words, all right? This is from Etamon Dictionary Online, and this is the word Madeno. And you, you see, it says, Madeno, a Jew or more in Spain, all right, to avoid persecution, all right, public profess, uh, profess conversion to Christianity while privately continue to practice the beliefs of their own religion, 1580s, uh, 80s from Spanish, probably literally pig swine. These are those Palatine boars, those royal uh, 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 black people that were in Ger that that took over Germany. They were all in Germany as well as Portugal and Spain. As Chris is uh, Benjamin Franklin is gonna so is going to let you know about. All right. So when you hear that word, the uh, because they would call them Palatine Boers. All right. Here's here's more. Here's to go Palatine, possessing quasi royal privileges, literally pertaining to the palace. Mid 15th century of countries ruled by Lord, uh, by a Lord has privileges resembling those of independent sovereigns of Palatine. All right. Knowing that these people were Israelites and they actually were royals because they were from the royal house of Judah. All right. Latin Palatum, medieval Latin Platimus was, was title given to one holding any office in the palace and prince possessing royal privileges, which means that black people were still ruling in Germany in different parts in the mid 1700s, all the way up until that time, which is why uh, uh, Ben Franklin wrote that very racist and hateful letter about them being in the Americas too. All right. Uh, so now we got Palatine. Let's look up Boers now. Mid-English Boer from Old English Boer. A bar bore unconsecrated male swine from prototype Germanic 
Bara, source also Old Saxon Dutch beer, Old High German boar, which is an unknown origin with cognates outside of West Germanic. So it's no question that Christopher Columbus and Martin uh there he is right there in the middle there's his book archives of Jewish uh the American Jewish archives uh Martin uh A Cohen that when he wrote about when he was writing about these Sephardim he was talking about the very people that we the definitions we just read about there is no question no argument there is no getting around it all right you're through. you exposed. Esau Edom is exposed. All right. So now, without any further ado, let's play this video. History is a lie. Why do some scholars name Benjamin Franklin as the father of white supremacism? From observations concerning the increase of mankind by Benjamin Franklin, page 224, quote, why should the Palatine Boers be suffered to swarm into our settlements and by herding together establish their languages and manners to the exclusion of ours? Why should Pennsylvania, founded by the English, become a colony of aliens who will shortly be so numerous as to Germanize us instead of our Anglifying them and will never adopt our language or customs any more than they can acquire our complexion? End quote. In this essay, Benjamin Franklin laments the vast number of German immigrants arriving in Pennsylvania. He uses pejorative language as he asks why and refers to the new arrivals as Palatine Boers. The Palatinate are the lands of the Count Palatine, a title held by a leading secular prince of the Holy Roman Empire, and Boers, a slur referring to a peasant, husbandman, or farmer. He alarms. The German immigrants will never adopt the English language and customs and will soon Germanize the colony due to their tendency to create communities. And more importantly, that these German immigrants cannot acquire the fair complexion of the average Englishmen in the 1750s. He continues, which leads me to add one remark, that the number of purely white people in the world is proportionably very small, end quote. Now we are certain he is talking about the skin color or complexion of these German immigrants. We have covered in previous videos brown complexioned German nobles like Philip von Masbach and his wife Eva von Grumbach from Bavaria, Germany, of the rich and influential Grumbach family. We also covered muster rolls from the American Continental Army during the Revolutionary War, describing brown and dark-skinned Germans amongst the enlisted. For example, these are few from the New York Provincial Troops. Number 73, Josiah Hinckley, born in Germany, complexion brown. 78, John Evans, born in Germany, complexion brown. 86, Edward Tout, born in Germany, complexion brown. There are also many German coat of arms books showing dark complexioned human imagery on many crests. So we can be certain Benjamin Franklin was not lying about the complexion of these Palatine Germans. We should also note that the complexion of these Germans was not the main complaint from Franklin. It was actually the language and German culture of these melanated people arriving in Pennsylvania. After all, we have also covered many English nobles of brown and dark complexions. So was he actually a racist? He continues, all Africa is black or tawny, Asia chiefly tawny, America, exclusive of the newcomers, wholly so. And in Europe, the Spaniards, Italians, French, Russians, and Swedes are generally of what we call a swarthy complexion. As are the Germans also, the Saxons only accepted, who with the English make the principal body of white people on the face of the earth. I could wish their numbers were increased. Why increase the sons of Africa by planting them in America, where we have so fair an opportunity by excluding all blacks and tawnies of increasing the lovely white and red? But perhaps I am partial to the complexion of my country, for such kind of partiality is natural to mankind." End quote. 
We believe Benjamin Franklin was generalizing the complexions of the European countries he mentioned based on the often swarthy nobility that still made a great showing or ruled these nations. However, swarthy complexions were present all over Europe. What we are interested in for this video are his wish to increase the pale complexions and almost bitterness regarding the vast amount of black swarthy and tawny complexions around the globe and in Europe. Even though the White League and the KKK came about in the late 1800s, the words written by Benjamin Franklin more than 130 years prior to the formation of the White League echo the mentality of white supremacism during the 1900s. And still to this day, there's nothing that's changed. And this proves when we tell you, yes, we were kings and shit. You know, those guys been real quiet. The, the so-called Negroes were ruling Europe when Rome fell. This is the unequivocal uh, uh, proof and evidence, undeniable, irrefutable proof and evidence. All right. That's exactly what this is. When Rome fell uh, uh, and they fell because of these so-called Negroes, this is why uh, so-called white men like Ben Franklin have such hate and disdain and why uh, and why they did, you know, Jake the way they did them when they came back into power again, because because Esau is angry that uh, over the birthright, he knows that he's an Edomite and he's angry over his precious Rome and Greece, which he got usurped. Negroes took over from Constantine all the way up until the fall of Portugal and Spain. All right. So all in Florence and Italy and all those beautiful places that they like to go visit. That's why when you go to Sicily and you go to the Netherlands and you go to 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 all these different places, Germany, you find all these images of all these uh, uh, these black icons of Moors and Christians and saints that are still there to this day. They, they couldn't even destroy them all. Still in the churches and things of that nature. Right? These people are liars. They are liars. They have lied about everything. And even here in this letter, he was referring to Miss Africans knowing that they weren't Africans. This lying piece of shit. I hope that in the reincarnation, I, he gets to come on my plantation. I'm going to slap the shit out of him every day on sight. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 42. In 17, and it reads, The Lord have not given power to the saints to declare all the marvelous works which the Almighty Lord firmly settled, that whatsoever is his might be established for his glory. His seeking out the deep and the heart and the considerate their crafty devices. All right, I'll read it again. He seeketh out the deep and the heart and considereth their crafty devices. For the Lord knoweth all that may be known. And he beholdeth the signs of the world. He declared the things that are past and for to come. And he revealed the steps of the hidden things. No thought escapeth him. Neither any words is hidden from him. Call Halal Yahweh Bahasham Yahweshai Bahasham Rakah Kwam Yashawala Abad Babal.